the Sega Saturn, a necessity for gracious living. History shows us that if you were gaming in the West during the mid 90s, you likely opted to buy either the Sony PlayStation or Nintendo 64. On the other hand, Japan is another story as for the first time ever in the region, a Sega developed console outsold one produced by Nintendo. That's right, the often overlooked Sega Saturn proved to be more popular than the platform that would become the home to Super Mario 64 and the Ocarina of Time. Considering the calibre and cultural impact of some of the Nintendo 64's greatest games, you may wonder what the hell the Japanese were smoking. But to give the people of Japan their due, the Sega Saturn is a far better system than most Westerners give it credit for. Holding these thoughts in mind, let's celebrate this Sega platform's strengths by considering why the Sega Saturn could be regarded as superior to its Nintendo counterpart. Part. I am Lady Decade and these are the reasons why the Saturn is better than the N64. The Nintendo 64 and Sega Saturn brought a lot of unique qualities to the table that deserves spotlighting. Still, today's video is all about Saturn worship, so let's break down the many advantages a Sega's 16-bit successor had over Nintendo's effort. A phrase is often thrown around that the Sega Saturn is a 2D powerhouse, which compared with the Nintendo 64 certainly appears true. For apparent reasons, that generation Nintendo would heavily build its platform around its capabilities to display 3D polygon based graphics. While it was possible to make games that looked 2D on the Nintendo 64, tiles would be produced by rendering flat polygons onto a fixed plane. Such a technique was most heavily manipulated when producing in-game menus or heads-up displays, such as showing you how much life you had left in Mario 64, for example. Despite such a technique existing, the Nintendo 64's 4K texture buffer would mean that often 2D graphics would rarely look great on the system. One user on the Retro Computing Stock Exchange explained that 2D Nintendo 64 games have low resolution repeating textures and somewhat poorly defined text. On the other hand, the Saturn has a huge selection of stunning 2D games in its rich library. Apart from deciding to take a slightly different direction from Nintendo with regards to the sort of games they had on offer, this 2D goodness was in part possible due to the Saturn's video display processors, which, when paired with the console's dedicated RAM, the hardware was capable of special things, including displaying beautiful 2D games. The Saturn's video display processor one could allow traditional 2D sprites to be produced without taking advantage of 3D distortion, like with the Nintendo 64. Capetti.org outlines that the CPU sets up the VDP1 by writing over its registers and filling its VRAM with commands and titles. The process can also be accelerated thanks to the DMA controller. In fact, speaking of 2D greatness when paired with a RAM expansion cartridge that could be inserted atop the Sega Saturn, arcade level 2D results could be delivered, something that even the Sony PlayStation wasn't capable of either. The most impressive example of this is demonstrated with the two systems versions of X-Men vs Street Fighter. Full tag team matches with many animation frames can be experienced on the Sega Saturn. On the PlayStation, gamers are mostly restricted to one-on-one -on -one matches as the PlayStation wasn't capable of simultaneously holding more than two different characters' animations within its working memory. But to be fair to the PlayStation, the N64 didn't have its own version of X-Men vs Street Fighter, whereas, well, the PlayStation did. While on the subject of fighting games, this brings to my next point a massive difference in quality between the Nintendo 64 and Saturn, the console's fighting libraries. The Nintendo 64 is probably home to just a half a dozen fighting games, and few are all-time classics. What does the system have? Killer Instinct Gold and perhaps the original, somewhat experimental Super Smash Bros. If you class that as a fighting game. 
Sure, there are a few more, such as Fighters Destiny, Clay Fighter 63 and a third, Flying Dragon, to name a few. But are any of these particularly special? Well, no, in my opinion. And the big dogs, such as Capcom and SNK, didn't offer up any fighting games for the hardware at all, which in part could have been due to the system's poor performance when it came to 2D. On the other hand, the Sega Saturn has a cornucopia of quality fighters, with myself managing to compile a list of over 60 of them before making this video. The Nintendo 64 has some fantastic games, but does it have 60 good fun ones to begin with? I'll leave you to try and answer that one in the comments section. Some of these greats include X-Men vs Street Fighter, which we already mentioned, the Street Fighter Alpha Trilogy, X-Men Children of the Atom, Marvel Super Heroes, Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter, Night Warriors, Darkstalkers Revenge, Darkstalkers 3, and that's just highlighting some of Capcom's offerings. We then have multiple King of Fighters games, Waku Waku 7, and polygonal fighting games such as entries in Virtua Fighter 2, Fighting Vipers, Fighters Mega Mix, and many more. If you want to buy a system to play fighting games, you will throw your money down the toilet if you opt for the Nintendo 64 over the Saturn. As demonstrated here, when it comes to fighting games, the Saturn tops the N64 in every way. But what about other genres? Another example of a genre whereby Nintendo could not compete with Sega would be that of light gun based on rail shooters. Sadly, the Nintendo 64 didn't even have a light gun. Despite the Super Nintendo before it had the Super Scope and the NES before that had the Zapper. Considering how great the Nintendo 64 was for polygon gaming, it's truly sad to see that the platform had no games of this kind. Still, the Saturn had games of this kind in abundance, including some ported to the platform from the arcade. Some prime examples of excellent games of this type include the iconic House of the Dead and the absolutely brilliant Virtua Cop 2. The system would even have some light gun games that also appeared amongst the Sony PlayStation's library, such as the on-rail shooter section of Die Hard Trilogy. Sensational. Building on the brilliance that cannot be enjoyed on the Nintendo 64 quite as much as on the Sega Saturn, another genre that the 64 lacks are Japanese shoot-em-ups. Sure, the 64 has a few decent offerings here and there, but according to my calculations, at least less than half a dozen. On the other hand, the Saturn has so many that they are difficult to count, and many are now classed as the greatest shoot-em-ups ever made. The best known example of all of these is most likely the all-time classic Radiant Silver Gun. Still, there are tons of other top quality efforts too, such as Darius Gaiden, Battle Garaga, Batsugan, Dodonpachi, and Tsukyu Garentai, to name some of these. When you look at the vast amount of amazing shoot-em-ups that can be found on the Saturn, a genre that is absolutely huge in Japan, it quickly becomes clear why the system beat Nintendo 64 in the region, despite Nintendo defeating Sega at every other hurdle in the country previously in history. Amazing. Many high quality exclusives could only be enjoyed on the Saturn, including some developed and published by Sega. The Nintendo 64 may have had Lilat Wars for example, Star Fox 64 as it was known in North America, but the Saturn would give us not one, but two amazing Panzer Dragoon games, two top quality rail shooters in their own rights. Speaking of Panzer Dragoon, Saturn owners would also be treated to the excellent Panzer Dragoon Saga, a ginormous JRPG unlike anything that appeared on any other system. Thinking about it, JRPGs were another of the Nintendo 64's most significant weaknesses, with Paper Mario being the only true classic it managed to deliver. The Saturn had many JRPGs published, even if many were never officially translated into English. Once again, it is another fantastic example of Sega doing a top job of appealing to its domestic market. The Nintendo 64 had a few decent Bomberman games, such as Bomberman 64 and Bomberman Hero. 
However, the Saturn gave us Saturn Bomberman, a title still often regarded as the greatest Bomberman game ever made. With up to nine player functionality, a top level soundtrack and a highly polished, refined single player mode, it's a must own for Saturn lovers. We then have unique and famous games such as Burning Rangers developed by Sonic Team, the awesome beat em up with RPG elements Guardian Heroes, the imaginative Knights into Dreams, the Dragon Force games and the superb scenarios of Shining Force 3. The Sega Saturn brings a vast array of magic to the table, none of which can be enjoyed on the Nintendo 64. So the Sega Saturn could be considered better than the Nintendo 64 for the following reasons. It's 2D capabilities, Sega exclusives, JRPGs, shoot 'em ups fighters and light gun games. The often overlooked Saturn blows its Nintendo competition out of the water in all of those categories. So if you were into any of the above, the Saturn is likely a console for you. If you enjoyed this one, subscribe and check out my old video on 80 Japanese Saturn exclusives. See you soon.